how motherly Mary was and how approachable. Here's one anecdote of that. Uh, there was a um, Jewish uh, Russian who finally got a, uh, permission to emigrate and he came to the uh, International Congress of Mathematicians in Helsinki. He, he, wanted, he wanted to meet Mary Ellen Rudin, but he was bashful about her and introducing himself and so on. And so I said, yeah, I'll introduce you. And so I went up to Mary Ellen and said, Mary Ellen, I would like you to meet Jacob Kaufman. And her face lit up. She knew exactly who he was. He started talking to him and giving him advice as to when he goes to Israel to contact Benjamini and a couple of other people and, and see about um, getting uh, some joint work done. And there was another incident where she smoothed over a difficult position uh, situation for me, a little, a little bit awkward anyway. Uh, I, this was in 75 in Memphis. Uh, Paul Erdős was there. I think you, you've seen this. There's this photograph where he is with her. And um, so I showed a photograph of Paul Erdős. Later on, actually, this was not at the conference. I took the picture at the conference, and then later on, I showed it to him. And, he, and Mary Ellen was right there. And he said, oh, again, Segin Polibachi. And then he turns to Mary Lynn and says, you didn't understand what I said. What I said was, oh yes, poor old Uncle Paul. And then Mary Lynn, with her jovial voice, said, well, it's good to be poor old Uncle Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I never had the privilege of doing a joint paper with Mary Lynn or even really working out any proofs with her, but I did referee two of her papers, and one of them was quite memorable. Uh, this, this solved a problem that Madonna had posed way back in 1955. This was in around 1982 uh, or thereabouts that this paper was given to me and to referee. And I never revealed this to anybody until uh, just a short while ago when I was writing this, my own contribution to this notices article that will be coming out in October. Uh, you can read about some details about this, but there's some other details that aren't there, and one of them is that I was the referee for that paper. And it was, uh, so here was this beautiful theorem of Nagami showed that a space is paracompact if and only if it is screenable, which means that every uh, open cover has a sigma disjoint refinement. Well, with Bing, all you have to do is to replace sigma disjoint with sigma discrete, and you've got a characterization of paracompactness. But what uh, Nagami did was he showed that to screenable, all you had to add was normal and counted paracompact. So an actual question, can you remove counted paracompact? And so Mary Ellen came up with this paper in which she used this horrendously complicated axiom, diamond double plus, which I'd never seen before, and used it to construct a space that was a counterexample. It was normal, but not countably paracompact. It was screenable, and so it, it solved uh, consistently Nagami's conjecture in the negative. Okay, I looked at this thing. I'd seen complicated things by Maryland before, but this one really blew me away. And so, in my covering letter to Jerry Vaughn, who was the editor for this uh, uh, article, I started out saying, I hope I don't butcher this too badly, I saw her space, now I'm a believer. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, of course, I was more restrained in my referee's report, but it started out saying there should be no doubt in anybody's mind that this result is worth publishing. But, like so many of Marianne's papers, it was complicated. The, 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 there were lots of places where she was glossing over details. And so the, I had this internal struggle. How many things shall I tell to for Barry Owen to put in there to make this thing more readable. So finally I came up with a, my first referee's report, which is about four or five pages long. And then, um, so Mary Ellen looked at it and she said, and she wrote back to Jerry saying, if it was up to me, I wouldn't make 
hardly any of these changes, but this person is really trying to make this thing more readable, and I can appreciate that. So she comes back with practically all my recommendations have been followed, but then I started going over the paper again, and I realized that there were some details there that I glossed over earlier. And I was, in my second referee's report, I told Jerry, it was even longer than the first one, uh, covering letter, I told Jerry, uh, I must have spent five hours on just this one little detail trying to convince myself that it was true. And then altogether, I, I think I spent about 35 hours on that second version before I was finally happy with the second thing that I said. And, but then I also said to Jerry, despite all these criticisms of her paper, I am still awed by what she has accomplished. And in one place in particular, in just a very short little detail, uh, at least the way it's written down, I said, I wrote that, uh, it reminds me of this anecdote that was told of Mary Ellen when she was in Laramie. This was, a, I think, 1974, 1975, Mary, what was it? 74. 74, yes. There's this, an I wasn't there. There's this anecdote that's told about her, and uh, she was, explaining something, Burton Jones was in the audience, and uh, so at one point it was such a complicated detail, J Jones interrupts and says, what allows you to do that? And then, what allows you to say that? And then Marilyn thinks for a moment and says, well, that's, that's just God-given. <laughs> and then Burton Jones says, yes, but what did God say when he gave it to <laughs> you? Thank <laughs> you.